Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. So we're going to resurface this entryway right here. As you can see, it's got some spalling on it. See that deterioration right there? So we're going to we got to fix all this stuff. These little things here, those things are just going to pop right out. That's all that's all from freeze and thaw. Maybe throwing some salt on here. You know, maybe some water getting on there, soaking down into the concrete, freezing, and then expanding, and then it pops the surface like that. So we gotta we gotta fix this stuff first, and then we're gonna resurface this whole patio right here. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So stay tuned. Alright, so the first thing we gotta do is remove that damaged concrete. Now, for me, I find the best way to do it is just with a little four inch grinder and a vacuum. You know, and obviously you're gonna to wanna to wear a mask, some glasses. But sometimes there's more damage than just what meets the eye there. So just picking at it with a screwdriver or tapping on it with a hammer, you know, will we'll remove some of it, but it might not get all of it. And we don't wanna resurface over any damaged concrete because it's just gonna fail fairly quickly so if if you have access to a little grinder like that you know that's probably going to be your best way to do it if you've never used one of those then uh, you know maybe just maybe just tapping on that with a hammer will be enough for you but you know since we do this every day so this is the best way and the fastest way for us to do it As you can see there was quite a bit of damage on that face even that you couldn't even really see but once I got into it with that grinder, it was just, the concrete was so soft, it was just kind of falling off as the grinder was touching it. Now what I'm doing is I, I get my hammer out, and if I run the hammer over the surface, you can kind of listen to it. And if it sounds hollow under that hammer, when you scrape the hammer over it, then there's more damaged concrete there. you got to keep removing it. Some of that concrete will look good, but it's not. It is, uh, it's just hollow under there. There's a, there's a void under it, but it just hasn't broken off the surface yet. So, you know, when we repair concrete, we got to make sure we get it all off. We don't want to be coming back in a few months to, to redo it. So that concrete was just kind of exploding off there as I was running that grinder off it. And it just kept... The damaged area just kept growing and growing, it seemed like. But sometimes that happens, you know, you just gotta be prepared for the worst. Yeah, so I'm sounding that out to see if I can hear any more. What sounds like hollow, there's a little piece right there. So I'm just chipping that off. It just takes a little bit of time. You know, the prep work is really the most important part of repairing any type of concrete. I got my little battery grinder there with a diamond blade on it, and that just helps remove it. All right, as you can see, guys, there's a lot more damage there than what we could first see by eye. All that was damaged concrete. Even though some of it looked good, some of it looked like this right here. I could tell when I sounded it out, when I ran the hammer over it like this, and it sounded hollow under there, that means it was damaged. So we had to remove all that damaged concrete and that's what it turned out to be. So what looked like uh, one little spot of spalling and a few other little small spots turned into a big piece of damaged concrete. So we're gonna patch that up and then we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna resurface this whole thing. So stay tuned for that. All right, so what I'm using for the patch material is Ardex CD. The CD stands for concrete dressing. And this is the same stuff I'm gonna to use to resurface also. So it just, you know, this stuff dries in about an hour so I can fill that patched area in, let it dry, and then I can do my resurfacing with the same product. So I'm just mixing up enough. This stuff mixes with water. It, it's pretty fine. It does have some grains in it, kind of like sand. But it's, it's a pretty fine material. Mixes real easy. 
And I'm just trying to mix up enough to do my patched area without mixing too much. So I don't have to waste it. So it mixes up to about like a pancake batter consistency. And then I've just got my hand trowel there and I'm just kind of smoothing it out inside that inside that area that I got ground out. Now I, I just want to make sure as I smooth this out that you know I try to get it as close to level as the rest of the surface, the good surface as I can, without getting it lower. If it's a little bit higher, that's okay. I want to leave it a little bit higher. I can always grind it down or or if I have a rubbing stone. You know, I can stone it down a little bit to get it level with the good part. But I, if it's lower, then I'll have to build it back up again in a second application. And I don't want to do that. So it's okay if it's a little bit higher. It's okay if it's not perfectly smooth also. I mean, you're going you're gonna to kind of sand it out anyway. It is pretty runny though. So, it, I mean, it's a little more difficult to do the face with this stuff than it is the the flat part the flat part's pretty easy so I'm kind of using a sponge right there and I'm rubbing it on that face to get it really pushed into the pores and to get it to stick there so here I'm about an hour later and I'm getting ready to I'm prepping the surface now for the for the resurfacing and the way I do it is I just use my little hand grinder there with a vacuum attachment so it's not too too dusty and I'm just lightly going over the surface now and just that helps clean it and it helps you know it helps remove any of the the age or dirt and debris or stains but it also helps open the pores up a little bit so the resurfacing material will bond really well this probably I mean it probably took me about five minutes to lightly go over the surface of this thing if you don't have any of this stuff, you, you could rent this stuff at Home Depot. I mean, they have they have little four inch grinders with vacuum attachments. If you know, this is probably the best way to prep it. You could just pressure wash it, but then you're going to have to let it dry out for a, a whole day. You know, and when we show up on a job, you know, time is money. So we want to try to get everything done in the time that we're there, especially if we're an hour or two hours away from the shop. Now I'm just taking my little multi-tool there and going around the edges and in the corners and hitting the face of that. That multi-tool has a little diamond attachment that goes with it. I'll have a link for that stuff down in the description if you guys want to check those out. And then once we get it ground, we just clean it. You know, I vacuum it really good. Vacuum the face up really good and then... Uh, then we're ready for the resurfacing. You can see there on the right my little rubbing stone, that thing with the blue handle. So we're mixing up the patch material. Again, this is Ardex CD. They have a what's called CD Normal, which is the one I use for the patch material. And then they have this CD Fine. And this stuff is almost like cement powder. It's really fine. It doesn't really have the grains of sand in it like the CD does. So either one works good. This, uh, the surface that I just ground there was really, really smooth. Um, so the CD fine was going to work good for this. So we decided to go with the CD fine. Now stay tuned. You're going to see we're going to run into some problems here. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over with you what those problems are and why we, in, we encountered them and what we're going to do to, you know, fix those problems. So we just trial this stuff down. It trials down really easy. We try to keep it at about a sixteenth of an inch thick. We don't really need to go any thicker than that. But you want it uh, thick enough so when you pull that broom over it, you know, we want to put a, another broom finish, a light broom finish on this for some texture. You know, there's enough material there to leave your broom marks. So as I'm troweling it down, you know, Luke's coming right behind me and putting the broom marks to it. And then Darren's just sponging some on the face so we it all looks the same color when we're done. You can see how easy that stuff trials down. What Luke's doing after he brooms it, he's just rinsing that broom off. That stuff, it's a little bit sticky. It sticks to the bristles, so it leaves a little bit better, a little bit finer broom mark if... 
if those bristles are cleaned in between each broom. I mean, you don't have to. You could just broom two or three passes. But since we had plenty of time here, he was just cleaning it. So what we're talking about now, this problem that occurred was there was a bunch of pinholes showing up in the material. This stuff's really fine and that concrete was really porous. So what was happening was the, the resurfacing material was soaking down into those pores and it was pushing the air out of the pores and leaving little pinholes in the surface everywhere. And we just didn't like how that looked. So what we did was, you know, we made a, a decision on the fly about, okay, let's just, let's just use this coat now as our base coat and seal up all those pores. We'll give this about 45 minutes to dry and then we'll go right back over it again. So th that's the kind of stuff that happens out in the r real world on the job that you just don't get in a training class. And, you know, I, I, I just wouldn't have been happy with, it looked pretty good with the broom marks, but I just wouldn't have been happy leaving it with all those pinholes for the customer. I just, you know, personally, I wouldn't have liked it at my house, so I'm not going to leave that that way for somebody else. So what I'm doing now is I'm just smooth, smoothing out those pinholes. I'm, I'm continuing to press the material down in those holes as they develop and uh, getting those all filled in really good. So when this stuff dries, we won't have the same problem the next time we go to resurface this. This stuff dries pretty fast, so it didn't take too much more time out of our day just to let it dry up and resurface it. So here it is about 45 minutes later. Well, we mix up another batch. You know, always make sure you got extra. Don't ever order or buy just enough material to do things once. Have, a, have enough on hand just in case something does happen. So we're going to go over this again real quick. It's not going to take very long troweling it around and we'll rebroom this you can see Darren's gonna run the broom over it he's pulling some right over the face and you know Luke's gonna just rub the face down again and what we noticed the second time was there was no pinholes it was just a really nice fine looking broom finish so we were pretty happy with that um, we were definitely happy we had enough product to go over it twice But sometimes that stuff happens and you just got to be prepared for it. You know, it's happened to us before, so we, we kind of knew it, it might happen. Most of the time you're going to be able to get away with just doing one application, but sometimes you just got to do more. You can see the guy with the broom there, his, his job is just to, just to broom it once it gets troweled on there. I mean, I I probably could have done all this myself on a day like today. It was about 55, 60 degrees out. It wasn't too warm out, so the stuff wasn't drying too fast. But we were also doing some more work at this project, this job site, so that's why we were all there today. You can see I got my poly down. I, I taped that some of those pavers off because we didn't want to get any material on that. So I'm going to finish that one little area. Darren's going to come in behind me and broom it. Then Luke's going to finish sponging the front. And then that little front entry, concrete entryway is going to be all resurfaced and look like brand new again. I'm going to give you a close-up shot here so you can check it out. So if you remember that spalling, you know, all that damaged area right there on the right and that face on the front I mean that's all gone this thing looks beautiful now it looks just like brand new again it's all gonna dry a light gray it's all gonna be even colored well that's it guys thanks for watching